Okay. So this is the start of the mung bean experiment. So I've already soaked the mung beans. Uh, for those of you new to this, we always soak our seeds, our beans, etc. So that's what I did, is I soaked them. I already see a little tail that was absolutely fell off. Now, I have the three-part thing. This is so that the water can drip into this. So there's about a quarter of an inch room in there. And I don't want them drowning, so I'm trying to squeeze some of that water out of there into the bottom here. And I'm only doing uh, half a tablespoon. Uh, that's all I did because half a tablespoon turned into this many, which is just going to fit on the bottom there. I could have probably got a little bit more, but I don't want to waste the seeds until I know that this is actually going to work. So hopefully you can see that. So I've spread them out. And what they've told me is that in order to get the nice fat bean sprouts, the kind that, you know, the commercial growers do, that they have to be weighted down. So I had these two little colanders and thought, well, that'd be perfect because they're flat on the bottom, right? So I'm just going to put this over top and keep it in there. It's fitting pretty tight with that, so I don't need that it needs to have that much weight, but I'm actually going to put a little shot glass in there, and that gives it some weight. Now the other thing is you're going to rinse them. Um, they say to take the colon, like take the colander up and rinse them very gently because you tr you want to try not to move them until they've actually germinated and got going. So that's what we will attempt to do tomorrow. And then the other thing is that unlike the sprouts that are happy back there that we only do them in the dark for four days. We do these guys in the dark completely. So this is what I call day two uh, because I always consider day one the soaking. I don't want anybody to forget about soaking. So we're just going to cover them up and keep them in the dark. Okay, so here we go. After the first 24 hours, we're going to take that off and take this off. Look at all them lovely little guys. So, we're going to run some water. We don't want it running fast. Because they said they just want us to like until these guys get germinated, just drizzle. Okay, maybe a little bit. We don't want to move them. So, I'm just going to take them out of that. should be good enough now. We're going to let those drain. And my understanding is um, the reason why instead of just spritzing at this point, and we're actually, at least the one that I saw, we're actually rinsing them, so to speak, is to ensure, because we're keeping them in the dark, that there's not going to be 
any stagnant, uh, you know, mold or, you know, anything like that. So if we're rinsing them every day, then we should be fine. So then they're going to sit on that nice uh, moist medium and grow big and fat, we hope. And my hope is that um, the sprouts themselves will go straight up and the roots will go into our medium, our hemp mat from Terra Fiber. So I'm just waiting until that's kind of drained out of there. That looks good. I'm going to put it back in the bowl. So I'm going to put it back in this bowl. And we're going to put that back on there and then I'm also going to spritz that to keep the top wet and then I'll put this guy back on like I'm doing right now and put my little weight in there and put them back in the dark so and then probably this afternoon I will take that off and maybe just give them a, another spritz just see how they're doing but it's really important that you know we don't get any mold in there and we keep an eye on it. If you have to spritz, you do. If you don't, then you don't. But you just want to keep them growing. So here we go on the journey. Okay, so we're on day four of the mung bean experience. And you remember that I always count day one is the day I'm soaking, like overnight. So. You know, you don't really start to see any sort of growth in day, day two in my videos. So we're just going to take this top one off. Whoops. I just lost somebody. We'll just put him back in there. But they're looking pretty good. Now, they're still not as fat as I'd want them, but they are growing and they're doing well. So we're just going to, again, rinse them gently. So we're not moving them. And I'll just take those out of there for a minute. Empty this. And I'm just gonna drain them for just a minute before I cover them up again. We'll see if keeping them weighted. I do see that guy looks like he's getting a little fatter. And so does that guy. So, I mean, it is only really day three of growth. But, uh, and they take four to five days to grow. So we're just going to keep weighting them down. And rinsing them every day. And again, we want to rinse to make sure that we don't get any stagnant, moldy, kind of thing going on we want to just have a nice happy wet medium for them to grow in okay so I'd say that's pretty good so we're going to put this back on there and again I like to wet that as well so that it doesn't soak up water from the hemp mat Just keeps them growing. And then pop that guy back on there. And when I get them back over to the counter, I do have a, a little heavy shot glass that I put in there to weight down that top colander. So, day four, and there's where we're at. See you tomorrow. Okay, so as you can see, um, there's little leaves on there. 
and the mung beans I'm I'm ready to harvest the mung beans so here's our harvest so I'm just kind of showing them to you but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in the bowl and rinse them off but they look pretty cool and they did get hatter now I probably should have taken the mat out of there and cut them off but I didn't I pulled them off so we ended up with roots and our guys as well but that's okay actually we just we threw them into a stir fry and uh, they were awesome and that's kind of all the the reason I wanted to do this is because you can't like I said earlier you know you can't uh, get them as fat um, at home usually but also the store always wants you to buy so much and you really kind of just need a handful so we're just gonna you know swish them around there um, that helps to get the little hulls off of them that they came from like the seed hulls so we're just swishing 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 picking them up and we're going to pop them in the colander but yeah I'm pretty pretty happy with the way they turned out they tasted really good And so that's pretty much all you do. So just take them out of there. Like I said, you swish them around and get rid of most of those little hulls that are in there. And then you can compost all those hulls and the little mat and everything. Um, you know, use them fairly quickly. You can store them. I would rinse them once again in the colander. Um, but you can store them just in a, like a, you know, Gladware Ziploc container, that kind of thing plastic container in the fridge I would dry them a little bit before you put them in there you know let them let them drain and dry them off a little bit with paper towel because you don't want them getting moldy either but yeah pretty much that was the harvest and it was a good experiment uh, we're happy that we did it there you have it hi if you like these videos click the subscribe button it's over there on the bottom um, but you can also click the playlist for other videos in the gardening series when we're just trying to uh, grow fruit at home food at home and have fun so stay happy stay safe and stay healthy. KY.